was it was exciting when the draw was made. I mean, being home to Liverpool was just such an exciting tie for us. Well, it was a very exciting to get Liverpool coming down to Ashton Gate. Like I've growing up when I did, everybody was I. Like, you know, nowadays everyone is a Man United supporter. But back when I was growing up, everyone was a Liverpool fan. At the time, if you look back in the nineties, uh, City hadn't had a huge amount of success. Um, certainly not the the days where we are now. So to get a big team, to get Liverpool in the in the in the FA Cup in the third round of the FA Cup, a home draw, just in, just fantastic. So so exciting. There was a real buzz in the dressing room. There was an excitement that we had. Um, we obviously had the Liverpool game to look forward to. So we were doing we were doing quite well in the league. So. It was a real bonus to think um, a few weeks down the line we'd have Liverpool at Ashton Gate. So yeah, there's a real buzz in training, and then it was a it was a fight then to try and be in the team when that game came round. So everybody was fighting for places and and trying to work play really well leading up to the um, leading up to the Liverpool game. So it's an interesting one um, because a lot of people remember the first game um, with the floodlight failure and the game being abandoned but then kind of forget the second game. So the the game that um, again took place at Ashton Gate 10 days later, um, finished 1-1, and we played really, really well that game. Um, We went 1-0 down to, I think, Ian Rush scored um, from memory. I think it was Ian Rush. I think he scored in both, but the first one got wiped out because of the abandonment. And then Wayne Allison scored, who, who again, coincidentally, had scored in the game that got abandoned. But people kind of seem to forget that game. Um, it seems to have been kind of the abandoned game and then moved straight on to the uh, to the, the game away at Liverpool. But bo- both those first two games, I think in the, the very first one, um, and you've, you've got to remember that, and, and for some of the younger viewers, it won't mean, a, or listeners, sorry, as well, it won't mean an awful lot to, but um, this was a Liverpool team they were managed by a, a fabulous player in Graham Souness, um, who went on to have a, a stellar sort of management career, or did have it, it, it ranges and stuff. Um, but they had the likes of Ian Rush, Robbie Fowler, Neil Ruddock, Nigel Clough, John Barnes, Steve McManaman, Bruce Grobelar. This wasn't a reserve team that we were playing. This was Liverpool's first team. Um, yeah, it's not every day that you you play what is now a Premier League club. Um you know, it was just anticipation. Knowing we, 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 I mean, probably looking back now, it was the probably one of the best squads we'd had in a long time, um, and we were well capable uh, of winning that game. I've always lived. Uh, I live an hour and a half away, uh, a place called Basingstoke, which is situated between uh, South Red and North of Southampton. For people who don't know, but it was the first ground I went to when I was a, a youngster, and um, I just. Fell in love with. There wasn't wasn't any local teams near me, and because I was in a catchment area, so there's you had the London overspill. So there's a lot of people going the railway platforms, and people going up to watch Arsenal, Spurs, Chelsea, a few Fulham, and then there'd be a couple. There'd be one from Plymouth, and there'd be me from Bristol City, and uh, on the platform was just going to our um, our games. I know every I every wanted to go away. I think, but uh, I, I particularly wanted them at home and. Um, I think Graham Sooners was struggling as manager at that stage. So uh, there was a sneaking feeling that we could actually do them. So that first game, um, I don't know why I was sat in the uh, the enclosure as well. So now the kind of lower Williams stand, um, or lower land stand, I guess. Um, I don't know why I was sat in there because I wouldn't normally have sat there, whether it was trying to sort of, because it was the only ticket I could get. But that first game, um, the the early exchanges we were second best. Liverpool, you know, did really well. They scored through, as I say, Ian Rush. Um, and then they had a really good chance. Um, Keith Welsh, who's a goalkeeper I loved at Bristol City. Um, and he was probably the, the first goalkeeper. They, they, I don't know whether the rule came in um, just beforehand, but he was a goalkeeper who would play with his feet. And the ball got, you know, it was when the rule change got made and you couldn't just pass back to the keeper and he could pick it up. And there was one moment where he went to to kind of play it and, and clear it, and it and it hit Robbie Fowler, and looped back over, very much like the, the Antoine Semenyo goal recently against Swansea, and looped back over, and, and I'm sure it hit the post, um, and well, she sort of stopped it, and that would have been two 0 Now, you know, as it was, we we know what went on with the floodlights, but you know, we we grew back into that game. Wayne Allison had a good chance um, with a header that he put wide. Um, 
and then he scored. And I don't know, I don't know if it's from a, a Tinian cross or um, from a Martin Scott who was who was left back cross, but but he scored. And I just remembered fans running onto the pitch when it went one one. Um, and I would have been what twenty four, I guess. So I was kind of old enough to realise you shouldn't do that. But you know, they, as I say, this you, you can't kind of understate where we'd come from in the sort of ten years previous. For us to be playing against a, a fantastic Liverpool team, um, who okay weren't on the greatest of runs that season, but the players that they had, you know, for us to go one one, and then we really went toe to toe, um, and the abandonment came, the lights went out, and there was a, an old school referee, Martin Bodenham, who I can remember now and can see clearly, um, you know, had to take the players off in. I don't know what the weight was um, before we knew the game was being abandoned. Bro, I remember walking out the ground, we were all panicking because we we wondered if we could get the tickets to go to the second game because obviously getting tickets was, you know, gold dust. As I said, the, the game was replayed 10 days later. Um, and we I think we made a couple of changes. I'm sure, I don't think Junior Bent played in the first game or if he did, he came on as a sub, but he played in the second game. And Junior was a player that I, I really, really liked because he was all energy. Um, and we had a, a, a striker, a number nine um, called Liam Robinson, who I think we'd signed from Berry, who again was all energy. But with both of them, they couldn't hit a barn door. Um, it was, you know, the chances we had both on on the, the sort of in the, the first game, but certainly in that second game when it finished one one. You know, Junior had a couple of good chances. Liam Robinson had a couple of good chances. I think I remember one save from from Bruce Grobelar, um from him. Um, but we, we drew 1-1 one, one and, and it, it got to the stage where you did get nervous. Well, we were very excited. Um, after the first, when the red lits fell in the first game, when we thought we were going to win, uh, and then um, it, we had the 1-1 one, one draw. Um, as I say, not many of us have been to a big football crowd before then. Uh, I've been travelling away um, with... Uh, uh, the Bristol City crowds, but it was always to smallish grounds because of the league we were in and only seven or 8,000. So the fact of going to uh, a really big game in a really big stadium was uh, quite exciting. It's, uh, there's a, a big cliche in football. and they talk, they, they, talk about, they talk about Liverpool on, Liverpool on European nights. And and it, although it was an FA Cup, it was a it was a nighttime game, and, and I can remember driving up to, driving up from from London. My my girlfriend, the now wife, um, came up with me, um, and it was a t- I took the afternoon off for work and sort of drove up, and you were just this excitement of going to Liverpool. It was the first time that I'd been to Liverpool, the city, and also the you know, clearly the ground. So it was just that whole excitement of of we're going to Liverpool. You didn't know what the, you didn't really care what the result was. You were going to Liverpool, and we we parked somewhere away from the ground. We found a we found there was some parking going in a in a park that was near the ground, and all you could see was a really really dark night, and all you could see was was the the, the lights of the stadium, a bit like a bit like Ashton Gate now. He said, with, with with the lighting, we've got Ashton Gate now, where the, the lights are on top of the stand and they're on the pitch. It was that sort of that sort of glow, and it was just just lit up the whole place, and you just got this vibe and this excitement. And you had must have been about thirty odd thousand people that were there, and people walking towards the ground, and you just it was just amazing. Well, I'd I'd never been to Liverpool, let alone Anfield, so I was excited. Do you know, part of me. When when it was one all in the uh, in the first in the in the second match at Ashton Gate, um, I can't remember. I think it, Wayne Allison had a chance to score, and I almost was like, "Please don't score," because I want to go to Anfield. But obviously, I would have loved it if he'd have scored, and we'd have gone through. But so I was, yeah, I was really pleased that that we um, that I could go to to Anfield, and I was uh, I was at college at the time, so. Had to skive off the afternoon. We I went in for the first couple of lessons in the morning, and then my we four of my mates we all drove up. Uh, he had what was a Mark One Escort, which is this real. If you if you can imagine like a clown's car that's falling apart at the seams, it was this car. So we only just got there. We broke down twice on the way. Had to stop and call the uh, RAC out to get us there. But um, yeah, it's w- well worth the journey. We finally we finally get to Liverpool. And we park up and these two kids couldn't be much older than you came up to us and said, like, give us a fiver and we'll look after your car. And we're like, oh, my 
got what do you do in this situation if you don't pay them they're going to do something to your car but we uh we decided against it because the car was probably worth less than the, the than five pound anyway so uh and they didn't do anything to it but it was yeah that was my first introduction to liverpool we pulled up not far from the ground i i, I honestly can't remember how far away we were it was a it was walking distance and i remember these two lads and, and probably scousers would call them two scallies but um they came up to us and it was my dad's company car and i don't know what he had then um i think it was a sierra cosworth from memory um, but I remember these two two scallers coming up to him and saying, you know, for a couple of quid, they might mine the car and make sure nothing happened to it. <laughs> so um, that was that was sort of funny, and and we we did we did pay. We drove up to the ground and we got there about you know, about an hour and a half. I think it was about two hours earlier actually, because I remember getting there early. And we parked up outside, and a, a young lad came up to me and asked me to look. I'd, he'd look after me car for me when we went to the ground. I couldn't quite believe what he was asking me. And I said, well, what do you mean? He said, yeah. He said, I'd look after a car for you for £5. Pound. And um, and it was, it was a new car it was for me at the time. And I was like, so I, was, I remember being at the game thinking, oh, no, I've left my car there. And this this little guy, like, you know, he, he asked me if it was fireproof because I wouldn't give him the money. So we, I moved my car around a corner. And I, when I moved it around a corner, so I panicked about, well, sorry, we were on the way to the ground. And I thought, I'm going to go back and move my car. I can't leave it there, to, you know, talking about firebombing my car. So we walked around a corner. I drove around a corner. I found another space. And another little kid came up to me and asked me to sing. He looked after me car for me. So obviously the little, young lads up there, they were like making money looking after away fans' cars for them. So the city had sold their allocation out. And um, somehow I managed. I got onto Anfield and I said, have you got any tickets? And they didn't even ask what my postcode was. They said, no, that's absolutely fine. So through the post came seven tickets in the main stand really right almost by the television camera so when you see that goal latinians from the side um that was the view i had of the goal so we went up in the seven seater car it was a night game i remember tremendous excitement and when we thought you know we're probably going to lose three nil four nil but you know it, it, it's going to be a fun night anyway and i remember when we arrived at the ground um it seemed that there were a huge number of people there. I mean, there'd been 20 odd thousand in Ashton Gate, a full house, but it just seemed, it, was so, it seemed such a huge stadium. And all these people, we parked the car probably two miles away and I got these young lads with me and it's a huge night for them, you know. And we were walking to the ground and I always remember there was these sellers in those days, you don't see them so much now. They had sort of um, easels, if you like, and they were covered in rosettes with the two teams on. So you had Liverpool rosettes and Bristol City rosettes. And as I recall, I think they had them in the, in the purple and lime. I think they did, but I'm not sure. But anyway, I was the Liverpudlians, of course, are great fun. I mean, they're, they're great fans. And they were saying, and I won't try and do a scouse accent for you, but they're saying, oh, you've come all the way up from Bristol. They said, we, you know, we, we've got some handkerchiefs we can sell you so that you can cry into them at the end of the game. That's actually what one of them said to me. And then it was all such a strange night because I remember there was a fan near me and somebody got pickpocketed and then somebody started chasing another guy. You know, so I've been pickpocketed. It wasn't a City fan, it was a Liverpool fan. Then a policeman chased him. The whole thing was completely surreal. Well, I went up with the City away travel with the coach um, and it was amazing. Uh, you know, just going to, to Ashton Gate to pick the coach up. But the whole journey stopping off in... And actually, you know, by the time we got there, you know, we were really excited. There's a bunch bunch of lads on there. We're all having a good laugh and, you know, eager to, to watch the game and then get into Stanley Park um, and then seeing the stadium for the first time was, was just absolutely amazing. And having time to walk around and see see the gates there, the famous gates, and just the atmosphere was buzzing up there, absolutely buzzing. We almost had as many people wanting to go to Liverpool who were going down to Ashton Gate on a Saturday. I was lucky enough to, uh, to, uh, to travel up to Liverpool with a friend of mine who uh, used to be a player manager at Salford, which is now in, you know, quite famous because of um, Gary Neville and people like this. Uh, but um, they were in sort of a non league stuff then. But he was he was an ex semi pro footballer, so he uh, from Manchester, so he knew the ground and he knew um, where it was and everything, and so we parked in um, Stanley Park, 
which is the, the park in between uh, uh, Liverpool and Everton. And when Liverpool at home, everybody parks there. And then the same, and then um, when Everton are part, they park uh, in the same park as well. And uh, so it's only a matter of about um, a, a few hundred yards to the ground. Uh, what was exciting about it and was the fact that it was so well organized. Um, you went into the ground, you were told exactly where you were. We were all behind the goal at one end. And then, um, yeah, we get into the ground and you walk up the steps in the away end and you and it's everything you imagine. Like there's not as much back then. We didn't have as many games live on TV. So the only were the big matches and Liverpool obviously were one of the big teams. So they were always on telly. So we we knew the ground, you know, uh, so you come out and. Uh, I thought that it would be this massive ground, but do you know what? Actually, when you get out, it, it feels much smaller than what you imagine in your mind. Like well, we came up through the steps and I, and I was like, you know, this isn't, this isn't as a bigger place as I imagined, but it was, but it was still amazing. You know, you had the, the cop and all that. And back then it was terrace and it wasn't seats. So, you know, there was already people were milling about because we got there really early because we were very excited. But I remember walking into Anfield um and and honestly it, it's it's kind of hard to describe unless you know tr true football fans will get this but it's when you go to one of those grounds and you, you you're looking around but it's your team that's playing there and that feeling and being able to walk out and to be able to look at the cop um you know and, and as i say i'm i'm you know Bristol City through and through. I, I do like Manchester United. I've never been a Liverpool fan, even in their glory days. You know, I, I was. Ne it was never a club that I took to. But it was just such an iconic ground and an iconic team that um, I, I genuinely couldn't remember a feeling like it beforehand. And that was before the game. You know, buying a program, um, which I've still got. Um, you know, as I say, walk, walking into the ground with my dad, with my brother, because um, my young, younger brother wasn't wasn't interested. Um, and it was brilliant that, you know, I, 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 I hope that I'd probably the, the, the thing that came close recently for younger fans would have been the Manchester City away game. Um, but, you know, that's kind of a new stadium and doesn't have the, the aura that Anfield's got. Um, Anfield, make, make no mistake, even now, but Anfield is a very, very special place. On the day we went up with the Cats City Away Travel Service. Um, can't remember what time we left. I think it was about two o'clock in the afternoon or something. And... Um, we went up with, and on the coach, I remember people, I don't think anybody thought we could win. I think, and I mean, especially me, I, I was going up just to go to Anfield. You know, this, the, the ground that I'd seen so many times on the, on the TV um, and, you know, going to see the cop and, yeah, I thought we were going to get absolutely battered. Um, but, you know, we were there to enjoy the day. What I do remember is, is when we came through the turnstile, um, I was, we, we got there really early and we were allowed in and we were in the uh, concourse bit, uh, which wasn't very big at all, if I remember rightly. And I remember, and this sounds a bit dramatic, but I swear to you, this is true. Um, we were right and I wanted to go and see Anfield. So I walked through and the entrance was, of the Anfield road end was behind the goal and it had a massive Adidas sign across the top. And I remember walking out and as I walked out, and seeing the cop through the, the goal net, the floodlights came on fully and it just illuminated the stadium, which just which just blew me away. And I remember being stood there for ages and there was loads of people around us just kind of looking around in awe of this, of this massive stadium. Um, and it was just absolutely amazing. I would have been in the, in the, in the it was, I, it, I think it's the K Dougley stand, but it was, it was the main stand. Um, to be honest with you, it was one of these things. It was, uh, I mean, I, you, you hear me talking now and I, and I don't really have a Bristolian accent. Um, back in 1994, I, I'd left Bristol uh, in sort of 91 to, to, to go to university and college. And, and so I had quite a broad Bristolian accent. Um, and we're sitting in, in you know, what in theory was the away end. So, so in terms of, uh, what I was up to was largely sitting on my hands and not saying anything because I didn't want to get found out just in case I was asked to move or, or you know, 
put some people worked out that perhaps I shouldn't have been there. All the tickets I had were, were, were from the board of directors. So Yeah, we were, as I say, we were excited. We knew we had an opportunity, really, because Liverpool were not playing as well as they could in the league. There was a little bit of pressure grown on them as a, as a club. So we knew we were really relaxed. I, th- I felt in the squad and on the way to the game and when we got to the ground, I felt it, it was a really relaxed group of players who... We, we, we were good anyway. We were a good group. We, were, we, we fought hard for each other. We had good characters in the dressing room. So we knew that we would turn up and give it everything we've, we've got. So, and as I say, there, there was a bit of pressure on them. And we managed to um, turn up and play really, really well on the night. It wasn't just a, a smash and grab. You know, we didn't go there and just nick a goal and hang on. We, we had chance after chance after chance. And when they had their chances, we were lucky they had a, a goalkeeper like Keith Welsh had goal. He was, um, he was very, very good. I don't know how many City fans we took. Um, you know, I remember the desperation of trying to get a ticket and, you know, as I say, being able to get one. But it was just... It, it was a party atmosphere beforehand um, because, as I say, I'm, I'm not sure even the most ardent City fans expected us to go and get a result there. Um, and before the game, everybody was just, you know, really excited about it. The noise was incredible. Um, and, I'm, excuse me, I'm pretty sure it was, it, was, um, it was standing then. I can't remember, if I'm honest. Um, I remember being stood up. So even if it was seating, we stood up for the entire game. Um, and and being able to share that kind of experience with my my dad and with my, my brother, um, and it was my, obviously my, my dad and my mum my that got me interested in going to Bristol City. Um, so that that was great. But you know, seeing mates there as well, um, and everybody everybody was just in such a really good mood. Um, and it was probably you know again like the games when we we got to Wembley for the first time against Bolton, and then the following year against Mansfield. You know, they, those sort of things just didn't happen to Bristol City. And, you know, get, getting a, a game against Liverpool, as I say, in, in that sort of the side and the players that they had. So that the fans, yeah, it was it was brilliant. Um, but equally, Liverpool fans as well. And, and you know, when, when we go on and talk about the game and, and, and the end of the game, um, I'll talk about that. But, but you know, Liverpool fans are... I, you know, every club thinks their their fans are, are the greatest, but I think everyone knows the the atmosphere that, that Liverpool fans generate, um, and certainly the cop. And and looking out how the players coped with it, I I do not know because they must have been so nervous, and you know, it would have been on TV. Um, you know, I know, I know they. I remember they beamed back the game to Ashton Gate. Um. I think they had a big screen in, and certainly I remember the, the, the following game um, because I couldn't get a ticket for the, the next game against Stockport. Um, we were in the the old East End, so the South Stand as is now, and they put big curtains up and a big screen. So I think they did the same for the Liverpool game for the fans that couldn't get tickets. But it was just a, a tremendous atmosphere. And and I'm I'm quite an emotional bloke, Ben, as you, your dad will, will know. Um, you know, I, I kind of shed a tear at it anything that's in the least bit, um, I don't know, not even upsetting, emotional on TV. Um, and so I, I, shed a, I shed a tear and got choked up before the game even started just because of the atmosphere. It was just incredible. Um, and then obviously throughout the game and the way the game developed um, and carried on, it will, I hope it's a memory that, that stays with me for the rest of my life because it was just the best night of my life at that point. Um, there was there was nothing that had compared to it before. So we got in the ground and we walked, we, we went through the Shankly gates and this was all great stuff for 11 year olds. I mean, it was just, they hadn't seen anything like this. And we walked up into the main stand and just from the top of that stand, looking down at the floodlit Anfield pitch and the sheer size of the stadium, I looked at my 11 year old son it, it, you know, he just couldn't believe it. His eyes just fell open. I mean, all of them did. I mean, they, they hadn't seen a stadium that big before. And it was just quite awesome. Go ahead. Yeah, no, it, it was just it was just so exciting. Um, you know, I I've never been to Anfield before. And and you have this, you have this picture in your head of a massive stadium, you know, you know, all these fans in it and the rest of it. 
but but we actually got to the seat and and then you know the, the players were warming up and you know and, and really getting excited and then they put because they had the lights sort of on half and then they put the, the lights on full and it and it was just like so small couldn't believe how small Anfield was I mean because it's a real traditional football pitch and stadium where you're right on top of the grass surface so you, you you know you get the atmosphere straight away when it hits you it's just amazing I think from a, a, a game point of view it, it was funny because Liverpool I think I'm sure had a couple of early chances um, and um, I think they scored early may, maybe 10 minutes something like that I think Ian Rush scored um, was it Rush I think it was Rush yeah Um and we, and we were a little bit nervous and, and um, Keith Welsh had to make a couple of good saves, but we, we then really grew in the game. And, you know, I, I remember a couple of really, really good chances. Um, a game that um, Liam Robinson had, Junior Bent had. Liam Robinson, there was one in particular where Bruce Grobelar, who, again, if, if, if fans this era don't know, don't know enough about Bruce Grobelar, I'm sure they know the name, but what a character. Um, there was a very famous European night for Liverpool when they won the European Cup. I think it was against Roma um, and it was a penalty shootout and he did a wobbly legs thing, which if you look on YouTube, so, so funny. But he was a real character, Bruce Grobler. I mean, he, he went on to be um, be charged with match fixing and, and went through a whole court case where they, they talked about him throwing games and stuff. Uh, but this particular night, he was at his eccentric best. Um, and there was one moment where he came out um, racing off his line to, to to try and get the ball, win the ball as it came through, sort of on the right hand side as you're looking, or his his right hand side, left hand side as as you're looking at it. I think it was in, in, in our end, um, the away end at the time. And um, he came out trying to sort of take the ball and, and pass it, and he passed it straight to a City player. Um, I think it might, I don't know if it was the Martin Scott or Rob Edwards. But the ball got fed back to Liam Robinson and Liam Robinson hit a first time chip sort of driven shot and, and the goal was open. It was an open goal. Um, and he's, he was probably, I mean, I, I, it probably seemed, seemed long for further out than it was, but he was probably 25, 30 yards out from the sort of touchline, not, not right on the touchline, but just in. And I can see it now. He hit this driven shot and because it was at our end, you know, you, you were sort of almost wishing the ball in and it just dropped over the bar but we had a couple of good efforts there was a, a moment I think before that um was it Tins or Rob Edwards had a shot that that um again really good move and, and went wide um I think Grobbler made a couple of saves but at the other end Keith Keith Welsh had to do the same and, and Liverpool had chances Russia had a couple there was a mad scramble at one point um where it seemed as though half the, the city team were in this scramble and, and Welsh was was desperately trying to grab the ball in complete melee and it was at the other end of the pitch and you're thinking oh my god they're gonna score. Um but yeah they 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 obviously I no I said Rush scored he of course he didn't score because it, it the way the game finished but he had a good chance early on. Um and, and Welsh made some really good saves um and we defended really really well but we grew into the game and we created lots of opportunities. And, and I just remember us playing some really, really good football, good sort of one-touch football. Um, and we, we got to kind of half time in, you know, I, I, I can remember, um, although it's the distant memory, but feeling, you know, we'd blown our chances because we'd had a couple of really good chances. And in those days, and, and even in the modern game, really, when you get these cup upsets, you know, it tends to be sides that take their chances. You, you don't get many opportunities against the big, big clubs. And we hadn't taken them. Um, and I just remember sort of feeling, oh, my God, are we are we going to, you know, regret that as a consequence? Um, and then we, we, we grew into the game. Um, I can't remember. Um, I don't know if it was before the, the, the goal or afterwards. I think it was before. Um, but Bruce Grobler again came racing off his line. And he, he he handled the ball. And I can't remember if it was in the air or, or how we did it in, in a challenge, but we were we were sort of going through. I don't know if it was Junior Bent or, or Liam Robinson. It was one of the quick lads. Um, I'm sure it's on YouTube. I probably should have watched YouTube before I, I started talking about this. Um, but he, he was outside the area. And I, we, we were screaming for sending off. Um, 
And without a shadow of a doubt, VAR, I'm sure it would have been. But um, I don't even know if he got booked. Um, but it was a free kick. It, it didn't come to anything. Um, but I remember then thinking, God, he should have gone. And, you know, again, it's another another opportunity that, you know, if we'd have had that and playing against 10 men, they'd have had to have taken a player off and brought a keeper on. Even if I can't even remember um, if in those days you had keepers on the bench. Um, and then obviously the, the, the goal. Well, when Tinian scored, it was phenomenal. I, you know, you, 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 if you can imagine you know, what, what, whenever, when, when City score now, times that by like 50. Back in those days, the FA Cup was so important. I, it's not as important today. Obviously, there's more football and, and what have you. But back then, it was the pinnacle of football. And to, to beat the Liverpool, this mighty all-conquering team. So when when I can remember that I remember the, I can remember the goal vividly. You know, um, Allison played a one-two with Tinian, and uh, he shot from the edge of the area because he said that I think it was um, oh god who was it that was coming in on him, and if somebody was about to hit him from the side, and he said he hit it first time and it just flew in. I could see it was going in and I'd already jumped up. My mate next to me had already jumped up. He was picking me up as the ball was going in because we knew it was going, he was going to score. And then we went forward about four rows. Everyone just fell forward in a mass and it was proper limbs. I mean, like you have never seen. <sighs> Do you know what? It's a whole slow motion thing. Um, I can remember the play and, you know, clearly I've, I've seen, you know, you, you, you've seen the, seen the goal back so many times. And you can just remember the play and you can remember the break and you can see Tillian that's got his, his slightly with his back to goal. And where he was, I was directly parallel to where, where he was. Where his back to goal was, you know, I'm looking looking straight on, you know, uh, his side. And you could just see him turn and you could just see the ball like slowly go into the corner. And clearly, if you watch it re replay back, it, it's you know, it, it's quite, quite quick. But you could just see it and you could see it so slowly and and it was just it was a sense of disbelief you just think my god he scored and then jumped up went potty the 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 the, 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 the wife the wife tried to pull me back down thinking oh you know we got we're going to be in trouble here jumped up went potty and and I suddenly looked and either side of me along this row of seats was full of people jumping up and down. So clearly I, you know, I wasn't the only City fan in, in that area. And that made me feel so much better because then it was just amazing. We've scored at Liverpool. I was well placed. I mean, the view you get of the goal is the view I had. And you sometimes, Ben, you can see a goal coming. You can just you anticipate that that ball is going to fall to Brian Tinian. And it could not have fallen to a better player. I mean, he's probably the best player I've seen at Ashton Gate in the last 25, 30 years. I mean, he's just a fantastic player. And the way he wrapped his foot around that ball and the way he fired it, I knew it was in. The minute he had hit it, I knew it was in. And... It was just the most amazing thing. Well, I didn't jump up. The boys all went berserk. In the middle of the Liverpool fans, they all went mad, you know, and it was fine. It was absolutely fine. And the goal was a, a, a really good move. Um, and, it, and and the ball kind of, it came up to, to Wayne Allison and, and his, his nickname was The Chief. And the Chief, I think he, he, he'd flicked it on or controlled it, but it, it got away from him and and... As it as the ball got away from him, Brian Tinian was alongside him, but had actually gone in front of him. And, and I probably shouldn't say this, but I, I'm pretty sure in today's game it would have been offside. And it, it's it's interesting to I wonder whether anybody's actually looked back and done any of the um, you know putting the lines on it to see. But look look at I mean on the night we, there's no way we could tell from where we were because um, it was at the far end. But but looking at it subsequently on the TV um, and recently when they they had the the anniversary and stuff. I'm sure. I mean, it looked it looked offside, but um, the ball was kind of behind Tins, and and how we managed to get his his left foot behind him and sort of shape a shot, and the shot was like this this beautifully curved effort that Bruce Grobbler and and honestly, just now talking about it gives me goose goosebumps, but the this this curved effort that that found the bottom corner. Um, and I'm um, actually, I'm welling up here, Ben, thinking about it. But I remember Tim's, I said I was emotional. I remember Tim's racing over to, towards the, the touchline and he slid on, on his, his backside. Um, 
and I don't know if it was Liam Rossini or somebody was was on the side, might have been Ian Brown, um, and the players just mobbed him. Um, and and Tim's celebration, although the slide was great, I've watched it back subsequently over the years. His celebration afterwards wasn't the best. Um, but yeah, I mean to, to go one nil and and the, the crowd and and genuinely, I mean as I say, I'm welling up now and I'm welling up because I remember I, I remember standing there celebrating with my brother, my dad, and the, the, the friends that we were with, and the tears just running down my face because it was such a massive, massive moment. Yeah, I, I played a little bit more advanced in that game. Um, we had Rob Edwards and Dave Martin in midfield, and I was I was the one who was going a, a little bit further forward and supporting Wayne Allison, uh, the striker. So. They were encouraging me to do that because they could see that was going to be a, a chance for us to get the goal. Um, they encouraged us. Junior Bent had quite a few chances in the game. Uh, I think Liam Robinson had a couple of good chances. So we were creating chances. It was just, could we, when we get that chance, take it? You know, Could somebody take the chance when it came along? And as it happened, I got that little break off Wayne Allison and, and managed to... Um, to find the far corner, but we were confident at half time that we we were well in the game. You know they weren't they weren't any better than us. We were playing well. We were creating chances, and could we, when we got that one, just take that one chance? Well, it all happened very quickly. Um, I think Neil Ruddick was coming from one side, and he he looked quite angry when that ball was just sitting there. So I had to get there pretty quickly to take the shot because I wanted to to keep my leg on at the same time. So. I took it really early and quickly and managed to just bend it round into that far corner past um, Grobelon. And to be the cop end as well was just an unbelievable feeling, really. When it, when it hit the back of the net, it was just a feeling that you'll never, ever, ever forget, you know. And all the rest of the players were obviously diving on top. Leroy comes off the side, who's the assistant manager, and Russell was obviously jumping up and down. So, yeah, it was a, it was a fantastic feeling. And then... When I'm running back that way, you can see the ten thousand fans going absolutely mental in the um, in the away end. So it was one of them feelings that will never ever uh, leave you. To be honest, it was it was brilliant. As it went on, nil nil, you know, we were holding them, we were creating chances. You started to think maybe, just maybe, and then then the moment happened. Remember the ball being knocked up to uh, Wayne Allison. Um, I can't remember if he miscontrolled it, but it, it came off him and it fell to Tinian, who seemed to swivel and ping it with his left foot into the bottom right-hand corner. And the whole way and just erupted. They were throwing everything at us um, and we defended for our lives, um, made the, the substitutions that we could. And I can't even remember, excuse me, in, in those days, how many we could make, but made the substitutions. But the, the, the feeling of... The, the ball and it was being, you know, it was, it was at our end that, that Liverpool were attacking. And every time they were surging forward, you could just feel your heart in your mouth thinking, oh, we, we're not going to hold out here. And again, I don't know how many minutes injury time there was, but it felt like ages. And it's, I don't know about you, but it's, it's always one of those things, I think, with injury time that, that when you're winning a game, three minutes injury time feels like 10 minutes. When you're losing a game, it feels like it's 30 seconds and it's just gone. You know, you don't. And it's, it's funny when we're down the the, the, the gate, Dave um, and Anne, but Davey sits next to me. Whenever injury time goes up, I always get him to, to stop his, start his watch, stopwatch. So I know exactly kind of what to expect. But yeah, this night, it just felt like it was going on and on and on. And then the moment that, that Martin Bodden and blew his whistle. Um, yeah, I'd never, I'd never felt emotion like it. Um, it was just just incredible that, that my team and you know we weren't we weren't the worst team in the world by any stretch of the imagination and you know we'd been in the old first division for sort of four seasons um, but I'd, I'd struggled for a lot of that time um, and then obviously you know the first the first side to, to fall through all four divisions in consecutive seasons and to nearly go out of existence and to have to build back up in you know the Wembley appearances but this this was just an incredible night and the as well as the goal the 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 the, the, the sort of the best memory i've got the most special memory is liverpool fans stayed to clap bristol city players off the pitch um the cop clapped the players off the pitch and that was just an amazing experience to see 
a team that were of, of groups of fans that were obviously hurting. And it says a huge amount about the 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 the, the scouts, the, the Liverpudlians, um, and obviously Liverpool fans come from from all over the world. But for them to stay and, and clap little Bristol City as it was off the pitch and you, you know, you listen to comments after the game on on the radio and the, and the news and stuff, and they weren't um, they weren't bitter about it. You know, they they came out and said they deserved it. Over, not even over just that game, but over the, the the two and a half games, we were the better team. You know, we we deserved it. And when you hear football fans like that, Liverpool fans saying that again, it makes that that extra special. Oh yeah, it, it was, it was, as I say, it was the best night of my life. Um, you know, straight away when the whistle went, the boos from the Liverpool fan aimed towards the Liverpool team, you know, was just deafening. Um, and then the, the you know the cheers from the City fans. But do you know what? I've always had a special place in my heart for Liverpool after that game because fair play to them, they clapped us off the pitch every one of the Liverpool fans in that stadium. And again, it was another sort of hair stand up on the back of your neck moment. Um, it, it was just amazing feeling. And it was brilliant. You could see the joy in their faces. You could see the excitement. They were going absolutely mad. Um, it was unbelievable. We didn't really want to leave that pitch, to be honest, that time. We wanted to stay on there for a long time. We were, we were enjoying every single minute. And it was unbelievable, really, because we... We celebrated with our fans for a period of time and then we turned around and you're expecting the stadium probably to be empty because Liverpool have lost an FA Cup game at home. But we turned around and the cop end was still there and they, to be fair to them, they clapped us off the pitch and so does most of the um, Liverpool supporters. So that just that just shows the class they have as a, as a fan base. And But the, the celebrations after were, were pretty wild and in the dressing room, the champagne was um, the champagne was popping, and we got on the bus. and Neil Ruddick, the centre half for Liverpool, brought a big crate of beer on the bus for us because he he played with Russell Osmond at uh, at Southampton. So yeah, it was a um, it was an eventful trip back from um, Liverpool to Bristol, and um, we certainly had a few beers on the way. I remember Neil Ruddick chucking a load of beers on the coach. I don't know why I think he was friendly with Russell Osmond, but he just came and just smashed a load of beers on the back of the coach. And, okay. you know, one thing about that, you know, that generation of players of those time was they could, you know, they, they played hard, like unbelievably dedicated to win games. People like Dave Martin and Shaley and all those boys would do anything to win. Or like after a game, they'd enjoy themselves and we'd have a laugh. By the time the bus pulled up in Bristol, they'd all be sensible because their wives would be here, but we had a laugh on the way back, that was for sure.